Hello everyone! It's time for another card making or paper pro uh, paper crafting class here on my Facebook page at Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel. And um, I'm going to show you a really fun card today. Let me see if I can find my um, my notes here. Um, okay, so it's I called it the diagonal fold over card, but um, I don't know. Now I'm thinking triangle trifold. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what it's being called by other demonstrators. Hey, Kathy. So I'm. I don't know if there's an official name out there, and you guys um, have that knowledge. Will you please share that with me? Because I, when I Google the diagonal fold over or a triangle trifold, it comes with a, up with all these other different um, folds. So. I don't really know what this fold is called uh, officially yet, but I love it and I want to share it with you. Hey, Mackenzie. Hey, Anne-Marie. Hi, Cheryl. Glad you all could join. And I'm sorry that I was a one or two minutes late, but we are having a printing issue again. Hey, Faith. So um, you're going to have to see the measurements this time on my laptop. I'm going to bring the laptop underneath the camera. You can look at it from there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have issues with my computers and my printers lately. Everybody has computer problems, right? Uh, that's just my latest. So let me think if there's anything else I need to tell you. Oh, we're going to be using Sweet Soiree um, products. So if you are familiar with the Occasions catalog, you'll want to look for the Sweet Soiree Suite. And that includes the Cake Soiree stamp set, um, the Sweet Soiree paper, just a lot of fun stuff in there. So I'm going to be showing some stuff in that bundle um, off to you today in this card. And it's a really actually a quite easy card to make. So I hope that you enjoy this. I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll put you in the stand and we'll get started. All right, let's clip you in here. You can already see a peak of it in the corner there, I think. Let me just slide this over a bit. Okay, so this is the card. Actually, there's two of them that I have done here. This is the card that we are going to make today, and I'm going to walk you through from start to finish so that you can see exactly how this card is made. I'm going to actually stand up on my stool because I want to be able to read <laughs> comments like the one that Cheryl just wrote. Hey, you are coming all the way from Alberta, Canada. Oh my goodness. Yes. You know what? I think that it's cold here in Minnesota, but I know that there are places further north. So um, I feel for you because <laughs> it's chilly here too. All right. So look at this fun card. Watch this. Isn't that cool? So we're going to go ahead and make one of those today. Hey, Michelle. I'm so glad that you joined. Let's go ahead and set this stuff aside for just a minute and let me show you all the pieces that you will need. First of all, we'll start with the non-consumables. This is the stamp set called Cake Soiree. Um, I believe that's a French name, Soiree. Uh, and so look at all the images you get in that set. I love the font. The font for these little um, sentiments is just so delicate and pretty. And it looks like you're supposed to be sticking them in the cake but you can actually stamp um, or ink up that image without having the little line come down through it. In fact, maybe I should do that for the card that I share today. And just some fun stuff with that. It also, you can also get this with, I know, right, Anne? Uh, Anne-Marie? Exactly. It's gorgeous. You can also get that stamp set in a bundle with matching dies, and you can save 10% if you get the coordinating dies. Now, we're not going to use the dies in this card today, but just know that that is what we what you can do. The Rich Razzleberry ink is the color that we're going to use that will coordinate with the card. We're also going to use um, some punches. We'll be needing lots of circle punches. Um, if you have circle dies or circle punches already, you can kind of compare and see if you have any similar sizes. Now this one here is the two inch. It's hard to read because it's been well loved. But this is the two inch circle punch and the one and three quarter inch circle punch. We'll also be using three others. And we've got these sizes too. Thanks, Jen. Uh, the one and a half, the one and a quarter, and then we'll also use the one inch punch. Now, because these um, punches, I mean, it can get costly if you have to go out and buy all these punches at once. Just keep in mind that you don't have to have that wide of a variety of circle punches. You could start with maybe even three punches or, um, or even less if you're not, if it doesn't matter to you, um, you know, if they're all different sizes. And, um, you know, just so that you can save some money because I don't want people to have to invest heavily if they're a beginning stamper. But this card is super cute and, and 
you know, the more circle punches you have, the more variety you have in the look. Okay, what else do we need? We need a paper trimmer, of course, because we're gonna be cutting that paper at a diagonal. So you'll need the paper trimmer. I always have um, a ruler next to me when I work. Uh, we don't sell those in our online store, but having a ruler nearby sometimes is helpful. A bone folding tool is great to have around as well for creasing your cardstock, but it's not necessary. And paper snips, and I like to have mine so that I have one allotted just for fabric or ribbon. It stays nice and sharp that way, and then I have a paper um, snips, one for paper. The adhesives that I recommend um, would be Fast Fuse or the Tear and Tape. Now I have to tell you, the Fast Fuse is being retired, and right now the full container, the cartridge, um, is sold out. So you can no longer get that. But if you are someone who already owns Fast Fuse, the refills are still available in the online store. Or if you don't have it and you want a strong tape, this is the one I recommend. This is the Tear and Tape which collects little fuzz on the side. <laughs> um, but if you are okay with Snail, Snail is a great adhesive to use too. It's just not as strong, and it can be done on this card just fine, and then we'll also need some glue dots. So to summarize that, a strong tape, fast fuser tear and tape, or Snail is fine. It should work. Um, trying to think what else. The other things are not necessary, but if you want to have green ribbon, then you'll want to have the, um, the light old olive blends pen. And the ribbon that we're using today is the metallic edge, the silver metallic edge ribbon. And I'll show you how that works real soon. It's really a cool idea if you have not seen this yet. Now let's get to some measurements. So let me pull my laptop over here and find the right page here. Hang on. Okay, so hopefully... You can see this and get a screenshot because I'm not going to hold it here as long as I normally hold everything. Um, yes, you could use circle framelits, definitely, if you ha don't have that many punches, Cheryl Lee. Good point. So go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Hopefully you got that all in there. And then we're going to set this aside and we're going to start our measuring process. So I'm going to pull in my stamp, my stamp and trim trimmer, my little uh, paper trimmer here. And we're going to start by scoring our eight and a half by 11 card stuff. So you wanna have rich Razzleberry um, to, if you're gonna duplicate the colors. And I'm just using an eight and a half by 11 sheet and I'm gonna score it or fold it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark because this is eight and a half inches wide here. So I want to go to four and a quarter and you can see the measurements up here, four and a quarter. And we're gonna use our scoring blade. On my trimmers, I mark my scoring blade, which doesn't need to be replaced very often. I just mark that with the word score. Uh, this helps when I have a class or if I have a friend that's using my paper trimmer so that they know not to use the other one if they want to score or they will wreck their cardstock. So um, there's a little tip for anybody who shares their paper trimmers. This direction is 11 inches, so we want to score that at 5 and a half inches to get a crease going halfway through. Okay, so now I've got folds in go bo going in both directions, and now I want to do a little bit of maneuvering with my paper trimmer here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the blades all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to pop out the cutting blade. Be careful, you don't want that cutting blade to hit your finger. It's pretty sharp. We're going to remove the scoring blade, and we're going to put the cutting blade back in. Okay, and now we can take and position our cardstock, and I'm not sure if we can get this all the way in view here. I will try to show it to you though. We're gonna position our cardstock so it's going diagonally. Hey Barbara, glad you could join. <laughs> all right, it's so fun to see where everybody's from. I love it when you guys tell me where you are from. Okay, so I'm gonna put the um, arm of my trimmer down, and I'm gonna show you that I've got the corner and the bottom corner down here, all the way lined up in the channel of my trimmer, okay? And we're gonna cut, but the thing is, we don't wanna push the blade into the corner of the cardstock when it's a real deep corner like that. It's, it's hard on the cardstock. So instead, we're gonna start it. Hey, Jen's from Washington State. I love it, you guys share where you're from. I love seeing that, thank you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start the blade inward a little bit on the paper, on the cardstock. We'll cut out, and then we'll come back in, and we'll cut all the way down. 
And that's how I recommend doing that for um, for cardstock when you're going into a corner like that. So we need to do another cut though. We have some cardstock that is, um, let me check to see the measurements again, five inches by three and three quarters. And we wanna do the same thing with this. We wanna cut it diagonally. So now that you can see that whole piece of cardstock here, I'll move it up just a tad. You can see the whole piece of cardstock in view. We're gonna go ahead and start with our cutting blade into the cardstock, pull it away, and then come back in and cut it. And now we've got our two pieces. Um, another piece that you will need is Whisper White, and this is just slightly smaller than the inside of our card. It is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And then we'll also need um, some old olive and some of this fun designer paper. Let me grab the old olive really quick while you just glance at this, the beauty of this paper because I forgot to grab my old olive. So hang on for just a second. That paper is called the Sweet Soiree Paper and it is gorgeous stuff. Where is my old olive? Here's some. Um, you will have metallics on all of these sheets. It's not just a couple sheets. Isn't that amazing how much it shines? Hey, Kendra's joining us too. Thank you, Kendra. And Kim, yay, I'm glad that you came even if it was late. <laughs> Here's the flip sides of that paper. It's beautiful paper. If you have not grabbed up a packet of this yet, then you're missing out. Now, if you're a paper hoarder and you won't use it, resist, because it's, it's so pretty and you may not be able to even cut into it because it's so pretty. So now I need to grab some designer paper. We need a little swatch of this, and we also need some old olive. So I'm gonna grab these two scraps and we're gonna cut them to size. And we wanna have, for the old olive, uh, four and three quarters by, and make sure I'm doing this right here, four and three quarters by three and a half. Now for these pieces that I'm cutting right now, they, they are only, we're only gonna use half of them. So when you're gonna make these cards, you might as well make two, because you can see I've got two card bases from the Rich Razzleberry sheet, and you're gonna get two from the Old Olive, and you're also gonna get two from this, um, this designer paper, the Sweet Soiree. Again, I want to make sure I've cut it right here. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay. Now, again, cutting diagonally, corner to corner, but this time you'll only need one of these pieces. So take the other one and toss it aside. And I think I actually cut that at the wrong angle, so I'm gonna have to cut that one again. Yes, I did. <laughs> That's okay, I wasn't prepared. I was worried about my printer. So you know what we're gonna do instead? We're gonna pull in, let's grab this one here. We're gonna pull in the bigger sheet here because I, I messed up, I messed up you guys. Oh my goodness sakes, three and a half. Now I'll have to make I'll have to make um, cards going the other direction. So I just have to make more and more of these. Okay, now we wanna angle it this way. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by I cut it wrong. So let's grab that piece here. So on the first one, I cut diagonally going that direction. On the other one, I had it going the other way. Do you see what I mean there? So this one, it will fit here, okay? but this one will not. Now the one that I cut as a pair for this one, it could be used up there, it could be flipped around, but this one will not work in the same direction as I have the crease in my card. Now I could make my card open up this way instead, and I could certainly use the piece going that way. So don't feel like you're throwing away your paper. This can be used on another card if you wanna make your card open differently. But because I wanna show you exactly what I did, it's good. Hey, you're learning from my mistakes, right? So we wanna save one of these, pick out your favorite. I think that one's gonna be my favorite. And then we only need one of the olives as well. So I'm gonna grab that and put that aside. For scraps, 
you're going to need some scraps of the rich razzleberry and we're going to go ahead and punch a two inch circle punch from that we're going to punch a one and a half inch circle from that and we're going to punch a one and a quarter inch circle from that and again those were listed on the dimensions that i shared earlier on so if you miss those you can come back and watch the video again and you can see all of those okay then on these scraps I want to have a one and a quarter inch circle and from this one I want to have a one inch circle and then we want to do the one and three quarter inch this is a punch we have not used yet and it's because I wanted to stamp first so let's go ahead and bring in the rich razzleberry yes surely I know right I'm keeping it real you gotta make mistakes <laughs> so we're gonna ink this up so that we don't have the whole image on there we're getting rid of that little stick do you see that little stick there we're not gonna have it as long so you can kind of just ink up your stamp by looking at it oops you're not seeing that sorry by looking at it on the side and it looks like this is a tougher one to do than the celebrate I did it with the celebrate one on a card but this one's a little bit tougher if we have to we will just go ahead and um, ink up the whole thing and stamp it again so <laughs> let's stamp that down Eh, I'm gonna ink up the whole thing because we still have a pretty long stick there that one might be tougher to do the celebrate image that's in there does not have all the loop-de-loops coming down like the birthday do you see that so this one is a little bit harder to omit now I could put masking tape or washi tape over it first ink up the stamp and then pull off the tape if I did not want that little part coming down so there's a tip for anybody who who that you know that little that little line there bugs it doesn't bug me that much so I guess I don't care all right now we're gonna go ahead and punch that out with our one and three quarter inch circle punch and we've got all of our pieces except our ribbon so now I want to show you what we're gonna do with the ribbon so we have this beautiful ribbon and I'm going to protect my little work surface by having um, a couple sheets so I folded one of our grid paper pieces in half if you if you put down a couple pieces of paper it really it ensures that you're not gonna have any um, bleeding go through but this is one of our blends markers so it's our alcohol based markers and if you just draw right on your ribbon like this and allow it to dry you can have different color metallic edge ribbons it's just really cool to have all those different options of ribbon so we already have this berry burst ribbon that's in the occasions catalog and it looks like it's the silver metallic edge ribbon that's been colored with a berry like a berry burst marker but um, we don't have that in the blends <laughs> we have rich razzleberry um, but we don't have the berry burst so here I have a pool party ribbon and this one was done um, with the light oh no I'm, I'm sorry this is the dark pool party and I'm sorry somebody made a comment I'm just gonna scroll back and see what you wrote there Michelle you can use the marker to stamp technique um, what do you mean by that hun can you explain that I'm sure I know what you're talking about but I'm, I'm not sure I know what the actual technique is that you're you're naming I want to make sure okay and then we have um, the light Calypso coral and we can do that as well and this is a warmer tone so as we come across the gold metallic edge ribbon that has a really nice warm look to it with the gold doesn't it so there's another option and if we do that color on the white because this has a vanilla um, tone to the ribbon here this is vanilla and gold and this is white and silver so you can see that we'll have a slightly different calypso coral look when we color this ribbon a little bit a little bit brighter it might be hard to tell in this light but it's a clear like it's a more true Calypso in this this has a warmer um, pinker tone and then comparing it with this one you can see here this is a dried Calypso coral and this is wet so it's gonna slightly change between the two colors 
And this is the dark Calypso coral. So I used the Calypso dark one on the last half of this ribbon. And this is the light, and then this is light on, uh, freshly drawn on, okay? So it's gonna, it's gonna change slightly as it dries. And then for this one, I did the light, um, the light old olive, okay? So I did a whole big long piece of this because I was using this for multiple cards. Then you just take a piece, and you only need about four inches of ribbon, and you just tie it in a little knot. And I just stick my fingers underneath to get a little bit of a, um, a little pucker there when I tighten it. So we'll grab our ribbon scissors and we'll snip and snip. And now we've got that all set. Take the stamp and write marker and color the stamp with it so you avoid inking the stick all together. The stick. I'm trying to, <laughs> sorry, Michelle, I'm still lost. I know that you can use stamp and write markers too. Um, the alcohol based markers are great for more of a waterproofy kind of thing, but yes, I have used the stamp pads and I've used the regular markers to color ribbons too. You just want to make sure that they don't get wet, that the card doesn't get wet so you don't have any bleeding. Is, is that what you're talking about? Just using regular markers? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully that's what you meant. Let's go ahead and add this to the inside of the card. So now we're going to go ahead and assemble the whole thing. I'm seeing some likes. That must mean that you guys liked the ribbon coloring technique there. We're going to go ahead and fold this down and crease it and then fold this across and give it a good crease. Now I do have to tell you that if you're not careful with your folding, you may see a small gap um, where the two papers meet and that's common. I got lucky. <laughs> I got really lucky on mine. They actually met up perfectly, so that's pretty good. Um, all right, so now we'll go ahead and layer these. And a little trick for this too, let me show you quickly, is you're gonna flip your two pieces. First, you're gonna put them right next to each other and you're gonna flip them over and then you're gonna put your adhesive on here. And go just like this. So, this, so that you're getting adhesive right up to the, to the edges like that. I think I've shared this before, but just in case you're new to viewing, this is the fast fuse. It's a little bit stronger, so I'm going to go ahead and use this on the remaining pieces here, but you can use the snail adhesive if you want to, too. Okay, and again, the fast fuse, it's the, the full cartridges are um, being retired. There's still refills left in the store, um, so if you want to grab up some refills for any cartridges that you have existing right now, this would be the time to do it. Okay, so we have those pieces on. I also want to mention, I'll do that while I'm taping this one, that you want to start gathering up any outgoing in colors uh, from the 2016 through 18 collection. This would be a good time to start planning or at least purchasing a few things here and there so that you don't miss out when they start announcing retiring products. When the announcement's made about what is retiring, anything that has a 2016 through 18 in color in it um, is going to be retired and usually the inks and card stocks are the first to go. So keep that in the forefront of your mind, those of you that are fans of those colors. Okay, so we have those pieces on. Now we'll go ahead and add this to our circle, our largest circle. This one goes to our medium-sized Razzleberry circle. And this one goes on our smallest Razzleberry circle. All right. Okay, now we want to put dimensionals on this puppy. Of course, I don't have them. Let me grab them. I forgot to show you that we need dimensionals. Don't forget to have dimensionals as one of your adhesives. And we'll put three on this one because it's pretty big. So you just stick those on there and then you use your nails. I have to tell you, those of you that have followed me for a while with my videos, my nails are on a break right now. I had a really bad manicure that happened and I could not get the polish off. And so I have not had my long nails in a long time and it's making me sad. Every time I look at a video, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my long nails are still gone. It's so sad when you're used to having them. Okay, th so this one just gets overlapped like that, okay? And I just have it going right to that edge 
and overlapping that razzleberry part of the circle right there. This one goes right onto the cardstock. And so this is where you want to have either a strong adhesive like Fast Fuse or tear and tape. Okay. You know what? Let's just go ahead and use this so you can see. This is our tear and tape. And we're going to put that right here. Okay. And we'll just peel that up and we'll put on one more, I think. The stronger tape you have here, the better. And you could use glue dots there too. You could totally use glue dots in this spot. But this is where you want to make sure you have the strong tape. Everywhere else, it's not as big of a deal. This one's going to slip underneath and it's going to overlap more than just razzleberry to razzleberry. You want to kind of tuck it in a little bit further. And then I like to have my, my lines going straight up and down. Sandy, you're joining us from Utah. I just had a chance to look at some comments. Thank you for joining us from Utah. You can see how it, it holds it closed pretty well, right? Okay, now the last couple things are just the embellishments. So we'll add a ribbon with a glue dot. And you can really put this ribbon wherever you want. I may even trim up this guy. He looks a little long. We'll just set that there. And then... um. The last thing is to add these little fun guys, and these come from the Occasions Catalog too. You get them in clear or glitter, and if you can, I'll hold it up as high as I can. If you can see on this one, these sheets here, I do have the glittery ones. I kind of separated them into two packs, but they all have just a glittery tone to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off, well, this one's already colored, so we'll start with that one. And grab this one, and we're gonna color them. We're going to color them with our light, um, yeah, our light old olive. And we're just going to add a little bit of color. You know what? I want to add the dark. I'm going to use the dark because it, it'll show up better. Hang on. Let me grab that. The dark will show up a lot better on these. I do have dark on another, or light on and dark on another card. And I think I liked the way the dark showed up better. So now I've got those colored in. Can you see that? And you don't have to color your um, little clear guys there. You don't have to even color the ribbon. So if you don't want to invest in blends, you can just tie on some, some regular ribbon. You know, this would even look really pretty across there, the white. So I colored this one with the Calypso, and these I did not color at all. And that still looks very striking. You can kind of see them, hopefully you can see them in the light. So now we'll go ahead and peel those off. We'll stick one up here. Oops, you know, <laughs> another mistake. <laughs> I colored the wrong side. Now where did it go? It disappeared on me. Hang on. Oh, we just wasted a couple. Okay, that's okay. This time feel where they are. I colored the wrong side. <laughs> See? Oh, there. Now we colored them. I actually colored this side, you guys. I, I'm sure you're all laughing out loud at me right now. Let's give them a little dry time here. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Mistakes are good, right? Mistakes are good. There we go. So there is our finished card. Now I have um, gathered up a ton of product that is just sitting here waiting for me to give to somebody and so I decided I am going to start doing prizes at my broadcast. Check out all those three cards. <laughs> Thanks Cheryl Lee. <laughs> I know I'm gonna to have to get my glasses out and find that little piece right Kathy? So I decided I'm going to start giving out prizes. I am researching I think I've figured out uh, a computer program that will help me do some random drawings and I'm going to initiate that next week. So I hope you come back to join me next week live. Um, I will give away a prize right after the live broadcast is over. And um, it will be for, of course, commenting because I won't know you're there unless you're commenting on my, my, um, my share that I do, my broadcast. And then if you do share the broadcast, like if you click the share button, then that helps me out even more because more people see what I, what I show off. So... There will be um, ways that you can get on, in on those prizes. And oh, oh, Sandy, thank you so much. You already shared it just now. <laughs> I'm not doing the prizes this week, but I appreciate the share so very much. I can't even tell you. 
So let me clip, unclip you here and hopefully I won't lose you. I want to wave goodbye. So I am going to broadcast next week. I haven't picked out the card yet, but I am going to um, start doing prizes because seriously, I have gathered up so much stuff and it's current stuff. Uh, but I, I just have a ton of it and I need to give it away. So we'll do prizes starting next week, every live broadcast. And I hope that you will join me next week, Wednesday. I believe that's the 28th of February. Thank you for coming, everyone. Oh, I want to mention too, if you are not a demonstrator and you need to get some of this product, you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com, click on the shop button, or if you were glancing at that um, stampyourartout.com on the, on the table the whole time, you'll, you'll see how to write that. But you can also click on the shop button on my Facebook page. So if you're looking for product, otherwise go to your demonstrator. If you have one, shop from her or him. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye.